For almost a hundred years, the Bennington Triangle has been linked to an eerie string of missing persons cases. The area itself is a densely wooded patch of land in southwestern Vermont. The triangle spans a large stretch of wilderness that includes the town of Bennington. Between 1945 and 1950, five individuals vanished from the triangle, never to be seen again, initially prompting speculation that a serial killer could be at work. Accusations also pointed at everything from satanic cults to Bigfoot. The area has also been a hotspot for paranormal investigators. The Wilderness Trail had become a popular hiker's destination since its opening. However, starting in 1945, these vanishings had caused many to speculate a supernatural intervention. There would no doubt be a rational reason for all of these disappearances, but you must admit the manner in which most of them just vanished without a trace is quite chilling. The following are five mysterious stories about the people who disappeared between 1945 and 1950. Number 5. Midi Rivers 74-year-old Midi Rivers was the first of a series of people to disappear in the Bennington Triangle on November 12, 1945 while out hunting. Rivers was guiding a group of four hunters up the mountains. On the way back, Rivers got ahead of the group and was never seen again. It was a local area that he was familiar with so it felt as though there was little to suggest he'd got lost. An extensive search was conducted, but the only evidence discovered was a single rifle cartridge that was found in a stream. The speculation was that Rivers had leaned over and the cartridge had dropped out of his pocket into the water. The disappearance had occurred in the Long Trail Road area and Vermont Route 9. Rivers was an experienced hunter and fisherman and was familiar with the local area, which makes his disappearance even more mysterious. Number 4. Paula Weldon Paula Jean Weldon, 18, disappeared about a year later on December 1, 1946. Weldon was a sophomore at Bennington College. She had set out for a hike on the Long Trail. Many saw her go, including Ernest Whitman, a Bennington Banner employee, who gave her directions. When the college couldn't locate Paula, they called the local sheriff. She was alleged to have been seen on the trail itself by an elderly couple who were about a hundred yards behind her. According to them, she turned a corner in the trail and when they reached the same corner, she had disappeared. Gossip about her disappearance soon ran wild throughout the campus and small community, including suicide, amnesia and murder. The college officially closed for several days so that students and professors could help look for Paula. After more time had passed, a more extensive search was then conducted, which included the posting of a $5,000 reward and help from the FBI. But they found nothing significant. Then a waitress in Fall River, Massachusetts, claimed to have served dinner to a disturbed woman fitting Paula's description. Strangely, after hearing this, Mr. Weldon vanished for 36 hours. After his return, people began to suspect that he had something to do with his daughter's disappearance. It came to light that Mr. Weldon did not approve of a boy Paula had been seeing. He claimed this boyfriend had to be the responsible party, but his only proof came from a clairvoyant. He then began to criticise the police for their lack of professionalism and lack of records. Firefighters and the National Guard eventually joined the search, however, no evidence of her was ever found. While rumours now speculated that she had moved to Canada with her boyfriend or that she became a recluse living in the mountains. The search continued, but nobody had ever found Paula or her remains. Number 3. James Tedford In 1949, James E. Tedford was the third person to disappear. Tedford was born around 1884 in Vermont, but not much is known about his early life. In 1940, 
He was resident in Fletchertown, Franklin, Vermont, with his younger wife, Pearl, who was 28 and he was 56. Things started to go wrong for Tedford when he returned home to Vermont at the end of his second spell of military service at the end of World War II, to find that his wife, Pearl, had vanished. No trace of her could be found, and the property they rented in Fletchertown had been left abandoned. Tedford's family claimed no knowledge of the whereabouts of his missing wife, and they said that they'd last seen her as she was heading to the Amigo store in Franklin, but they never saw her again. Tedford later became a resident at the Bennington Soldiers' home and had been in St Albans visiting relatives. He was returning home the local bus to the Soldiers' home when he vanished. According to witnesses, Tedford got on the bus and was still on the bus at the last stop before arriving in Bennington. He was, according to witnesses, on the last stop before his destination. Somewhere between the last stop and Bennington, Tedford vanished. His belongings were still in the luggage rack and an open bus timetable was on his vacant seat. None of the other passengers and the bus driver claimed that he ever got off the bus. He simply vanished into thin air. On December 1st, 1949, Tedford's remaining family reported him missing, exactly three years after his wife Pearl had disappeared. Number two, Paul Jepson. On October the 12th, 1950, eight-year-old Paul Jepson became another victim of the Bennington Black Hole and the fourth person to vanish. Jepson's parents were caretakers at a rubbish tip. The young boy had accompanied his mother in a truck. She left her son alone to attend to some duties and was gone for about an hour. When she returned, her son was nowhere in sight. Search parties were formed to look for the child and in keeping with the strange stories of the Bennington Triangle, the boy's father told the Albany Times Union that it was perhaps the lure of the mountains that pulled in his missing son, as the boy had talked of nothing else for days prior to the disappearance. His father claims that the boy had a strange yen to go into the mountains. Although Paul was wearing a red jacket, which would have made him more visible, intensive search parties found nothing. In addition to the hundreds assembled for a search party, a New Hampshire sheriff brought in a bloodhound to help search for the missing boy. The dog was able to pick up his scent, but abruptly lost the trail at a nearby crossroads, suggesting a possible abduction by a motorist. Whatever the case, Paul Jepsen was another person to vanish into thin air. Number one, Frieda Langer. The fifth and last disappearance occurred 16 days after Jepsen had vanished. On October 28, 1950, Frieda Langer, 53, and her cousin Herbert Elsner left their family campsite near the Somerset Reservoir to go on a hike. During the hike, Langer slipped and fell into a stream. She told Elsner if he would wait, she would go back to the campsite, change clothes, and catch up to him. Frieda is said to have been quite familiar with the area and the camping site was only a few hundred meters from the stream into which she is said to have fallen. When she did not return, Elsner made his way back to the campsite and discovered Langer had not returned and that nobody had seen her since they had left to go hiking. Over the next two weeks, five searches were conducted involving aircraft and helicopters. No trace of Langer was found during the search. On May the 12th, 1951, seven months after her disappearance, the corpse of Frieda Langer suddenly appeared near Somerset Reservoir in the open, easily visible part of the forest that the hundreds of searchers could not possibly have overlooked an extensive scouring of the woods seven months previously. No cause of death could be determined because of the condition of her remains and exposure to the elements had left the corpse in such a condition as to render detection of violence or any kind of clue to Mrs. Langer's fate virtually impossible. Langer was the last person to disappear and the only one whose body was found. Was Frieda Langer another victim of the Bennington Triangle?